do we want to let the world in on this? We could. This is, <laughs> we could let this is our this is our third attempt at doing an interview. But well, we've actually done two interviews, just not ones people can hear. You know what's honestly great about it is every day that you've uh, we had an album come out Friday, so I wasn't on the yep. farm, but the the farm called me this week and they're like, Hey, can you come out and uh, drive the truck for us? Which I love doing by the way, but I've, I've got two days here. That's like, well, no, I got a podcast right in the middle of the day. <laughs> so it's kind of worked out. <laughs> Hope it's not good money. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I love going to the farm and I love yeah. being part of that, but um, there's a little more, there's a little, once you get to this point in the music business, there's a little more money in it. So <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Logan Mize is our first guest here on Ye Radio, the podcast, and we're hoping that this takes this time. We get it all. Yes, we'll get it all. Yes, absolutely. We'll get it all. So I, yesterday, well, so the second attempt was great because my dogs were sleeping. Today, they're fighting each other. They're at wrestling. They're eleven right. week old, eleven week old puppies, and they. And now I got a got a nice bi, nice plane. Bi plane flying over my house. It Listen, might be we'll actually, just be glad that there's audio. We'll just be yes. excited that there's audio this time. It, it might be we, a crop duster. Yeah, I think that's a crop duster going by. Right. Do you do you uh you said the and when we've our very first one you were talking about, hey, I, I can do this day because I'm not out, you know, harvesting grain. What do you what do yeah. you do there? Yeah, so uh June is like wheat harvest around here, usually okay. like late June here in Kansas. You've you've lived here before, so you kind of yeah. know that whole thing. And then uh usually fall harvest is the big one. It starts very tail end of August, early September, and it'll go all the way through October. So that's like um dry land corn, irrigated corn, irrigated beans, dry land beans, uh milo. So that takes probably two months. In between, you know, this is you get more rain this time of year, so you have off days and stuff. But right now, I think they're still in the middle of uh, soybeans. So I did all the irrigated corn, uh, most of the irrigated corn, and that was like long days. And um, hopefully, they don't drop me. You drive the combine? Well, you know, I'm not uh, what you would call a real farmer. I can drive all the <laughs> I, I can drive all the equipment. Um, yeah. I know how to drive it. But as far as like doing farmer things, like you know, if the combine's cutting right or any, I don't know, I, I drive the semi, I can drive the grain cart, okay. you know, um, but I'm just a hired hand. And you can drive your own bus if you need to now, I guess. I, I can drive my own bus. <laughs> I've, I've done that before. Uh, I had a bus driver once and he's, he said, Hey man, I'm pretty tired. I might have to wake you up for an early shift. And I was thinking in my head, like he might wake me up at 8 a.m. 8 to get across Minnesota, you know, and it was five, 4 35 o'clock in the morning i went to bed at like one or two uh and he wakes me up he's like i can't make it another mile so i'm driving and at the time i learned my lesson on this my trailer had my face on it oh, and no uh, yeah i was headed to we fest in minnesota <laughs> and i have a caravan of cars next to the bus honking and i look down and they realize i'm driving my own bus so then they were basically coming in with a posse into we yep. fest and it's like note to self take my face off the trailer <laughs> take, and you haven't had it on there since have you have you have your on name there. on it no no we yeah. are completely yeah. inconspicuous rolling down the road you know it's cool because like when you first get a bus you're like it took me 10 years to get this and now i'm going to show everybody in the world that i i got a bus yeah. and then after about two years of that it's like i really just want to remain anonymous on this thing and get some good sleep and not have to worry about crazy people and and all that not that anyone cares about logan mize but and that's the only time I'll ever refer to myself in the third person. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's still, it's, it's just, it's nice to be, uh, anonymous on there. You know, my, uh, my father was a singer and he, uh, he used to tour when he was younger, he was like 17, 18, he would tour with Ernest Tubb. And that was back in the day when they did put their names you know, on the yeah. front, on the back, on the side, maybe a picture. Yeah. But they also didn't have social media, I guess. That was the benefit. It was right. just announcing that it was like a billboard rolling into town. Yeah. Telling everybody absolutely. you're playing there sometime soon. Right. Yeah. Come to the show tonight. We're we're pulling into town. That's pretty cool. My my uncle, my great uncle Billy played for Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys for a while. No way. Still, Western yeah, swing steel guitar. So oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, only about two or three weeks, uh, I think. 
it was like he came out to fill in for somebody and then he went back to Bakersfield and did the whole Buck Owens Merle Haggard um oh fun thing. Yeah. So but I know that there was like a two or three week stint. I know that's a little different than Ernest Tub, but same kind of thing. That's cool yeah. though. Yeah. Do you have any recordings with, with that your uncle played on? Yeah, he played on a lot of uh, he played on some Merle Haggard stuff. He played on a lot of Dean Martin stuff. He wrote a Dean Martin song. Uh I'm trying no to way. think of all that. Yeah, he wrote a song called Who Will Buy the Wine uh, that was recorded by several artists. I know Merle, actually, I played at Billy's 80th birthday party in Bakersfield. I was a kid. I was like 21. I just moved to Nashville and uh, got called to play his 80th birthday party out there with Merle Haggard. And uh, Merle Haggard is sitting in the audience and he's like, I got to say my favorite song ever is he's on the screen. He's sitting in the audience, but he's up on a like a. I don't know, a projector. Like a jumbotron. Okay. Jumbotron. Yeah. I was, yeah. and uh, he's like, my favorite song Billy Mize has ever recorded, or my maybe my favorite country song of all time is Who Will Buy the Wine by Billy Mize. And uh, I was like, oh, crap. My heart sank because then the announcer comes on and the lights go up. And he's like, and coming on to sing Who Will Buy the Wine, Billy's nephew, Logan Mize. And I'm like, and Merle's sitting right in the front of the stage. No way. Get, and I had to get up there and sing that song with him looking at me the whole time with the house band I'd never oh. rehearsed with. It was nerve wracking. Uh, so, but I got off and he kind of gave me like a little wink, you know, but man. His, his wink of approval? Eh, I hope it was a wink of approval or like, hey, you tried, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, really tried. Yeah, you tried. Yeah. Did you ever hear the story of Toby Keith? Of no. the, I think it was a, I think it was a show that he went to go watch of Merle's, I want to say in Vegas, and I'm probably butchering this story, but it was some, something that he was, it, when he was really starting to not feel well, and uh, he couldn't finish the show. Oh, and, yeah, and uh, Toby got up there Toby, and sang him. Right? Yeah, he did the, rest of the, he did the rest of the set list. He goes, I know everything on the set list. I'll go do it. That's cool. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's really cool. The impact that, that Merle's had in... Uh, and country music is just, it's long reaching. I mean, you hear, you know, artists like yourself, artists that, that are now starting to become famous on TikTok, you know, that are just breaking into it. Know oh, I know. who Merle Haggard is. Oh, I know. It's crazy. Sorry, my wife's pulling up in her car. It's going to be loud for just a second, and then it'll stop. Man, uh, this is real life. This is what it's, it's about. Just, this is yeah. real life. Right here. And listen, this time of year in Kansas, you don't want to be inside because this is the time that it's nice because here in about two months, you don't want to be outside. Yeah, it's perfect today. Again, it's like uh, probably 60, high 60s, oh, nice. no wind, sunny. It's beautiful. So, Very yeah, nice. beautiful day here. You mentioned that we uh, that I've, I've lived there. That's where we met was in Wichita, Kansas. And you're yeah. born and raised in, in Kansas, that same, that part? Bo yeah, born and raised, uh, uh, grew up in Clearwater, which is like, I mean, That's right. half, 30 minutes south of, of, Clear, of Wichita. And uh, right now I live northwest of Wichita town called Andale. So I'm, I'm in the proximity. I grew up now. I, I was gone for a long time, but, um, yeah. Did you live in Nashville? Back, Nashville for, uh, 13 years. And oh, then, uh, good Lord. She had to, <laughs> she she had had to, to honk it or had, had to, to lock it because had, it could, you could have broken into it while she was inside. She had to set the alarm because I can't see a house anywhere in her roundings or people at all. Or yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah. So, uh, Thanks, Nash people. Nashville for 13 years. And, and then after a while, I was like, uh, I don't know. I'm going back, going back to Kansas. I don't need to be there. You know, it's, it's a rat race and it changed a lot in the, in the time I was there. So Nashville did. Yeah. I loved it when I got there and I still do. I like going back, but it just got so busy and so crowded and, mm -hmm. and, uh, we kept moving further out. We got to the point that we were living clear down, like, 40 minutes south of Nashville. It's like, at this point, let's just move home and have some free babysitting, you know? Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, and I love it there. I still go back and visit folks, but it's it's a lot nicer living at home. Did home change a lot when you came back from the time you were in Nashville? Um, No. No, it's the same yeah. here. Wichita's Every, the same. Wichita, yeah, Wichita's here. a little bit. You know, it's good. They've, yeah. they've tried to vamp the city up. You know, they got a lot of cool uh, – uh, they got the Wichita flag everywhere now, you know, get behind Wichita but luckily which I is what which Wichita flag have you have you seen it um it's like a 
I'll dial it up here and, and show you. It's okay. it's on every, it's painted on the side of every business at this point. It's okay. become like a Wichita Pride thing. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, just a badge of of where you're from is that what that yeah is? and i think it, they it was made in like 1921 or something like that uh and i got one of them on my guitars like you can kind of see it's like uh that oh yeah yeah sure yeah see so everywhere now yeah and i mean i live far enough from wichita i don't really feel it but like late at night you want to watch the stars you can kind of see the glow of the lights so it's i'm yeah. close enough for comfort but uh far enough away that I don't feel it too much. So, man, one of the things I remember when I was there, and it might've been when we first met or we may have met at the station or something before, but it was a, it was a big show with this. Oh, who's that? This is tank. And he hey, was tank. trying to curl up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's 11 tank weeks. Wanted to get on this one. Yeah. So say hi, say hi. Look, look, buddy. Yeah. He's like, I don't care. For those, for those of you listening, you got to hit our YouTube so you can see tank for a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tank, tank, uh, hopefully this one takes because tank probably knew this one was going to be the, the one that we actually post and wanted. Yeah. To, he's like, it's those first two. I knew you weren't going to do it. He's, he's work. chewing on cords. So it's <laughs> don't electrocute yourself. Well, he buddy. may be the reason that it doesn't work this time. That could right. be it. Right. Um, no, the, uh, there was a show that you did uh, this place that we were always at, it was called denim and diamonds. And it was, yep. um, we always had a really good crowd and whatever we, what we were doing, we we're bringing new artists, introducing new artists and things like that. They're playing acoustic shows, but to, I'd never seen the place this packed when you and Jill played at denim and diamonds. And uh, do you remember what was that? That was for, was it just a homecoming show? Yeah, it was like our first, you know, we'd kind of played around the area a lot and we had just started yeah. to get, like, get some momentum going, uh, from an independent album I put out in 2009. And, uh, it's, for some reason we kind of had some, uh, I think people were confused. They're like, is this mainstream Nashville or is this red dirt country? Is this, <laughs> no one really knew. So they were all curious and they all showed up, but that was when we first started kind of growing it pretty big here in the Midwest. And, and, uh, um, that was fun, man. I think there was a huge fight that broke out that night. Uh, it was pretty wild. If I remember right, a lot of drinking. Well, I think was it, happening. it only held like, I mean, I think limit was probably, I think it was less than a thousand and I think was, you had yeah. at least a thousand at it. Yeah. I know it was like 900 less than a okay. thousand, something like that. And they had, okay. I think they said they had over a thousand in there. So they just pushed it to the limit and, and it was a hot, sweaty mess. So. Uh, yeah, they said hi fun. to the fire marshal, then he left, and then they let he the people in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, that was a, a fun show, but I remember that that yeah, kind of being my first impression of Logan Mize. Like, Dad, young people showed up for this dude. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah it was cool, uh, and it's still fun to come back here and play. But you know, um, now it's like once once everything started taking off here, then we start going everywhere else, and then we only make it back here like once a year, um, which is weird because we, you know, I spent every weekend it felt like either coming to Kansas or Nebraska when I first started tour. And so we don't play here as much as I want to, but it's, I think people still care, but the crowd's older now. I mean, that was when I was college age or just out of yeah. college. And now everybody's grown up and got kids. So I don't know. I don't know if the college college kids are into me now, but uh, you know, <laughs> I think, I don't think there would be as many fights. The, the drinking maybe has tamed down a little bit. It's tamed just a little bit. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Go check out your followers on Instagram. You can tell pretty quick from something like that. That's true. That's yeah. true. A lot, lot of more, lot more kid posts and mom and dad posts on there now than there used to be. But I think we got used to be. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But we do family a, photos. Exactly. <laughs> we did have a uh, song uh, called "Grew Apart" that was like uh, uh, it was on the last album that came out at the beginning of the year, and it it became a thing on TikTok. So people were posting themselves like singing this song on TikTok, and i noticed that that created like a younger you know there you damn dogs are about to pull the plants off the table sorry this is the, <laughs> they aren't sleeping today i don't know why they're not taking naps that's all right that's all right that's awesome oh god oh well uh, we they, we play we play grew apart on Yee, Yee radio and uh it's one of my favorite songs from yours and off this new album, you have a new album called uh, welcome to Prairieville. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're playing the first song off that album, uh, George Strait songs. Uh, what I love is the first line in the song. Cause I think it kind of sets the stage for the entire album. The entire project is uh, there's still a little America left in America. Yeah, man. I, I, I think that had to be the, the first song uh, for the project. 
um, after I'd kind of finished all of it and uh, listened to all the mixes, it, that song just felt like the opening line. Um, yeah. I, I love that line because, you know, it's as much as things have changed and as much as uh, the world is just moving at a, a really fast pace, uh, I think there's still that spirit out here in the rural rural Midwest parts where, you know, it's just people kind of move a little slower and they still have that that big dream, that a big American dream. And I'm not saying that doesn't exist everywhere. I think it does. But, um, you know, there's just that in, that honest, hardworking spirit, you know, that when you think of when you think of America, um, I think that's still alive and well. And I think it's important for people to to remember that, you know, so it's it felt like a really cool way to open the open the project. Is this the favorite, your favorite music that you've done so far, this album? Yeah, yeah, this is by far. And it's not because of, uh, you know, any other reason than I finally kind of figured out my own writing style. I've, I've figured out, and some people I think figured out really early, um, or they either figure it out early or they don't, ha or they have success early. I don't know how, which comes first, but for me, I've, I'm thankful that I've been on, a, on an extremely slow path. Um, because I don't know what that screeching, no, that was the door, Jill coming out here. Um, I've been on an extremely slow path, but I'm thankful for She's that. She's like, are you doing an interview again, again. with Ant? <laughs> yeah, she loves it. Is this uh, a daily thing? What's this? <laughs> yeah, we talk every day for an hour. Yeah, that's right. Uh, very slow path, very slow climb, but I, I think it's given me an opportunity to get all the, uh, you know, make all the wrong turns, make all the mistakes kind of off the radar and you can go back and listen to old records and, and I'm sure people do. And they're like, Holy cow, this is the same guy that put out welcome to prayer is putting out, uh, you know, this stuff from 10, 15 years ago. That sounds really raw, really rough. Um, but I started early and I just kind of jumped in and, and was like, I'm going to put all my mistakes out there and, um, you know, do it the hard way. But this is by far the, my most favorite project I've ever done. And it's the most authentic to me for sure. Presuming you wrote this entire album, what's writing like for you? Is it is it a daily chore? Is it fun to do? Is it just when inspiration hits you? Uh, yeah, it's work, but I love it. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think, you know, I put a lot of time early on in Nashville. Uh, like when I first moved there. <laughs> She's saying apparently, bye. That's all apparently right. Jill's leaving again. I don't know. She said she hi leaving. earlier. And yeah, she, she said bye. hi. Now she's saying bye. Uh, see you later. Good Bye, boy. Jill. <laughs> uh, I got to find a better spot to do these podcasts. What do you got to do? A four point turn to get out of here? What's it? Good it's Lord. cool. It's real. I yeah, like I guess it's real. I shouldn't have parked my truck in a way. Uh, yeah, the writing process for me is, is uh, you know, it's, it's not an everyday thing. It is an everyday thing, but not in the way that I'm sitting down every day like I'm going to write a song. Uh, that's how it was early on. When I was in Nashville, it was like, you show up, you write with a new person every day and you got to get to know them first at, or maybe not. And then you just jump in and have to bear your soul. And it's like, usually most people don't want to bear their soul in a, in a songwriting room when they're first getting to know somebody. So they just write like surface level stuff and, and, uh, nothing against it. It's just, it, for me, I, I felt like I could never quite dig in. And so. I did learn a lot about songwriting by doing it every day for years. Um, yeah. But in that process, I kind of figured out like, I'm not an everyday kind of writer. I'm more of an observer and I let things come to me. And now that I know what to do with it, I think um, um, then the editing process becomes, um, that's when the work comes in and it's like, okay, I got the inspiration. Now I know what to do with it. Um, whereas if I wouldn't have put that time early on writing every day, I wouldn't know what to do with it when it, when it came to me. So I feel like there's a balance there. You gotta, you gotta go through that phase where you're just writing, 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 pounding it. Right. But for me, it just, uh, it's, uh, I find more inspiration when I'm not just chasing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What, who did you grow up listening to? Oh man. Uh, well, I'd say my biggest influences, like as far as in my, in my writing and my music and stuff, uh, probably would be like, uh, John Mellencamp or, uh, Tom Petty. Um, I like, hear some of that in this album. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of that. I mean, yeah. favorite albums of all time, probably like late eighties, early nineties, Tom Petty. Um, 
mid late 80s john mellon camp so that time period right there i feel like there was some magical music that came out mm -hmm. a lot of jeff lynn style production a little bit of mutt Lang in there um you can hear that's that comes more from my producer dan he's a huge mutt Lang fan and i, I do love this mutt Lang. oh yeah yeah he loves mutt Lang. i'm i love jeff lynn and like the uh i guess uh into the great wide open record petty uh full moon fever had like free fall and all that stuff that's that's uh, kind of my what I'm really into. Those are my favorite records, but um, yeah, all sorts of influences. Uh, I got into country music, you know, when I was like maybe in fifth grade, I heard Tim McGraw. Uh, uh, I never really listened to country. My parents were like into Elton John. And and so, oh wow. Yeah. So I was like way into Elton John. I remember showing up to the fourth grade dance party, not a dance, but like a dance party in the, in the, uh, we had a party at school, bring the cupcakes and bring your favorite music yeah, and everyone sure. brought like okay. ace of bass cds and and <laughs> whatever else is i showed up with a double disc uh elton john greatest hits you know it's like what do you mean we're not gonna listen to candle in the wind you know <laughs> like you <laughs> weirdo uh yeah so it, a lot of elton john influences for sure and um and then Inya was my probably my all-time favorite i got into her Inya. Inya. Yes. Inya. And I know that people are probably thinking, you mean that lady that sings only time? Yes. That was one of her songs, but like, I'm that's probably the most like, popular one, right? That was her most popular one. That was like late nineties yeah. um, when yeah. she kind of had a little mainstream hit there, but like early on when Great she was massage coming, session song, what's that? Great massage session song. Great. Yeah. Couple couples massage, you know, right. uh, absolutely. <laughs> Does uh, off. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. But when she was, uh, coming out of her family band, Clannad, and kind of started going out on her own and teamed up with Nikki Ryan, the, the producer uh, and lyricist that kind of got her going with that early. I think her first record was, uh, people are falling asleep at this point. I'm getting into Inya. But her first <laughs> record was she wrote the soundtrack. We're not playing any music underneath it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the Celts, uh, which came out, I think, in 88, and it was like a, a soundtrack to a, a documentary. I think a PBS documentary. And then from there, like uh, the one that was really big for me was 91. I was six years old when it came out, but I remember it as a kid and loving it was the Shepherd Moons album. And I still, to this day, if I get in on an airplane and it doesn't matter where I'm going, I turn on Shepherd Moons and I'm out in, in a heartbeat. That's still my just go-to music. Wow, that's not an answer that I think that, <laughs> that most people would be expecting. Like, it's, pretty, it's pretty weird, I know. I, I don't know. It's from, just very comforting. Go from Merle Haggard to Inya. Absolutely. But I love playing that Inya music on the piano. It's just really soothing to play. And and uh, I never got the like the Elton John chops. I can play a few of his songs. And, and uh, if I sat down and really put my mind to it, I probably could. But the Inya is stuff that your is first just, instrument? Uh, that's what I first started on. I was six when I started okay. playing piano, six or seven. And um, then I kind of did that till I was maybe 12, 13, never really got great at it, but I'd know my way around the keyboard pretty well. Good and then, enough, yeah. yeah, good enough to know theory and all that. And then when I was 16 set, probably 17, uh, I started playing guitar and okay. guitar was like what I started writing songs on and, and all that. So um, yeah, I think I've, I probably wrote my first full song, like actually finished. I had a really big problem with starting songs and not fit, starting things, not finishing. That's a really Your first verses. That's a of songs. yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a trademark of mine. Finish things <laughs> or start things. No, finish. Them. there's an album. Yeah. It's just called first verses. And that's first all verse, it is. It's one verse and it's done. Yeah. I've got have more songs. Oh, that'd be like a triple disc album. Exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think I wrote my first full song when I was probably 18. Um, and from there, I was like, when you, once you finish a song and then you can listen to the actual finished product and go, I actually finished one. Then it became a practice to actually finish, start finishing songs. And, and don't get me wrong, I have plenty of song starts laying around. But uh, um, yeah, that that became you really... Do you use your phone or do you write stuff out? Or now I, do now I use my phone, I voice memos on my phone, and then uh, I'll go down to... Uh, I got like a recording set set up and I'll just make uh, easy little demos down there, like piano vocal or guitar vocal or something. Um, but uh, back in the day, man, it was like, I didn't have any, I didn't even have a tape recorder. I just memorized them all. And then I would like keep 
little notebooks with lyrics and the handwritten lyrics. I didn't have a computer or anything. And then finally, there's a guy, when I got my first publishing deal in Nashville, um, Brett Jones was my publisher. Um, he wrote a bunch of hit songs I knew. And uh, I, I didn't even know what a publishing deal was, sure. but he, he gave me one. And uh, he's like, first of all, here's a laptop computer. And this is like early, like, you know, early Mac. So this would have been 2007. And it was old at that point. So it was like sure. that big block, white blocky thing. And he's yeah. like, there's a recording thing in there. You can just hit record and it'll record your thing. You've got to start recording your songs. And so he kind of got me into like the practice of putting things down. So, yeah, for the past 15 years or so, I guess I've kept decent track of what I've been writing. How long did it take you to do this album? Started writing this one in 2011. And so normally, oh, wow. like, yeah, normally an album uh, or a project or whatever will be like pretty recent. Everything's kind of uh, come together for the, that purpose. But this one started as a concept album in 2011. And uh, I just every week would get together with my friend Blake Chaffin, also a Kansas kid, great songwriter. Um, and we'd write about what's going on in prayer this week we'd write about it and uh it kind of out of that we kind of developed our own writing style and so when once we got to the point where we were going to record this album it became less of a concept we got rid of all the concept songs and and uh made it more just themed we wanted to be more universal we wanted to be accessible for everyone not just people from two states and you know here in the middle uh there was a song on there early on called one finger wave and it was like, okay, no one in, you know, three states west of here knows what the one finger wave is. You know, <laughs> everyone here waves at each other when they're driving down the road with one finger and not the middle yeah. finger, just the index finger, you know? So uh, I was like, yeah, okay. That's get, the one finger you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Ab- yeah. So get the regional, regionally specific stuff off of here and get it, you know, make this more universal. And so, but I still think it all fits together pretty cohesively. We've been playing, uh, like I said, uh, George Strait songs. It's the very first cut on this album on Yee Yee Radio. You can check that out anytime. Uh, also, make sure you go stream it. Go download it. Uh, you got vinyl coming out or eight tracks or anything like that? <laughs> eight tracks for sure. Eight tracks. No. Yeah. We, yeah, we will, we will have, uh, we'll have Welcome to Prairie, but will come out on vinyl. I think it comes out next week. And our, oh, our nice. Yeah, it'll be on our merch store at loganmize.com which actually won't be open. We just moved our merch store uh, back here to Kansas. So our we just got done kind of setting up. So it'll, it'll be open this week. And then right. um, we should have vinyl stocked uh, by next week. Um, so yeah, look for those. We have the, the last two albums on vinyl as well, which was Practice, or not Practice Wing, sorry. Still That Kid, which came out in January, and then Comeback Road that came out in 17 that had the gold record, uh, Better Off Gone on it. So, um, yeah, those are, those are all on vinyl and I usually will sign them and send them out. So, uh, yeah, Very you get nice. the website. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll have to get it on vinyl cause I love the sound. Of Heck, vinyl. Yeah. Just, Heck yeah. Especially for a concept album like this mm-hmm. where everything's written about a, fic, you know, the fictitious town of Prairieville and, uh, and what's happening in that thriving metropolis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I love that. It's fun. I was always a fan of Willa Cather novels and she was, she was like an uh, early 20th century novelist and she was from uh, Red Cloud, Nebraska. And uh, she had like some of her early books, like Oh Pioneer, My Antonia and whatnot. I loved that she changed uh, like, especially in My Antonia, the town of Blackhawk. I'm like, there's no Blackhawk, Nebraska. It was like, she was changing the name of the town and inserting people. She grew up around with changed names. And, and I thought that was cool the way she kept the characters like, uh, you know, really uh specific to people and and places but didn't name anybody or name any place specific i thought that was cool yeah. so that was kind of where prayville came about it was, i was in the middle of reading i think it was my antonia and i was like that's cool i'm gonna do that and so yeah. here now we have welcome to prayville well it reminds me of like friday night lights too friday night lights there's no dylan texas but right you can all exactly. everybody knows where dylan texas is just by watching yeah. it yeah you know, absolutely know where that is. absolutely yeah, I'm excited that, about this album. It's really good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say thank you. I know you guys have been playing my stuff. Uh, Tyler, Granger's brother, we were hanging out yeah. here. Uh, gosh, it was a month or two ago. And he was like, man, your stuff's always playing on your radio. So, and I know that you're the the mastermind of programming that. So 
thank you. I owe you a big thank you. He's like, I bet if you turn it on right now, your song would be playing. <laughs> it, it, pretty pretty quickly it would be i think uh, some yeah. of them we we played two or three cuts and uh yeah it, it fits your music fits well especially uh on ye radio it fits well into to our our fictitious town here as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeeville i love it i love it man yeah, it's yeah. it's such a such a cool thing that uh it's turned into i remember early on i was about to go on on a tour um, there was actually two opportunities, one to go out with Granger and one to go out with another guy on the West coast. And, and I remember thinking at the time, like, Oh, I haven't toured the West coast. And the label was like, the time I was in Sunny, they're like, yeah, you're always in the Midwest. You should go to the, uh, do that tour on the West coast with this other artist. And, uh, looking back now, it was like, I definitely should have, uh, stayed in the Midwest and just toured as Granger's opener because there's so much, sure. it was right at the beginning of the EE thing, right at the beginning of Dibbles. Like it really yeah. hadn't quite taken off and I could have learned a ton, you know, because, um, God, it's grown into a huge thing and it's really cool. So I'm super thankful to be the first guest on this podcast. It's awesome. Well, thank you for, uh, for, for working with us too, man. We've, we've faced some really weird technical difficulties and, and, uh, getting this first one off the ground and, and maybe that's, cause there's something behind it. Maybe there's a, there's a, some, some fun stuff coming because, uh, why else would there be so many hurdles to jump i guess right yeah hey i'm happy to jump yeah. through them with you this is yeah. awesome and i'm, I'm man so happy i appreciate you absolutely yeah i'm excited about this album make sure you go download it uh go stream it and make sure you listen to it uh here on or on yee Ye radio it's called welcome to prairieville we're uh playing um uh george Strait songs right now the big one playing that quite a bit and uh that's jill saying hi again no uh, that was i don't know <laughs> 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 Logan, good to see you, buddy. Yeah, thank you so much once again. I appreciate right. you, and uh, this has been awesome.